been as event organiser of Race Retro, this is an immense show and Europe's premier choice, isn't it? It really is, yes. There are similar shows to this in Italy and, and over in France, and, but we get a, a lot of the visitors that go there coming here to Stoneley um, every spring. But it really is making a mark for itself. It's going, been going about six or seven years now. This whole interest in rallying and historic F1 cars is immense and it can only grow and grow. Uh, you've probably seen here, Gemma, cars from for Formula One drivers of yesteryear. Um, right behind us at the moment is one of Graham Hill's cars, which is terrific. It's had a lot of interest. We've got a lot of the big museums here. It really is a fabulous show. The thing is, at the moment, historic racing seems to be becoming a little bit more accessible. Uh, that's absolutely definite, Gemma. I mean, you can start with anything from, like, the go-karting uh, to even things like old uh, Fords and, and th things like that, that you, brands like that you've probably seen out there already today out on the rally course. So you can enter this market at a very, very economic stage and work your way up. But yes, the whole interest is enormous. It certainly is, and it's proved by the footfall through the show here this weekend. For you, has it been a success? Uh, absolutely. We start on the Friday, and by close of play tomorrow, we expect about 75,000 visitors, which is quite enormous in this uh, financial climate. To find out what's on offer in current classic racing, I'm off to catch up with Hugo Holder of the Classic Sports Car Club. Does it have to cost a fortune? No, we, uh, we cater for all sorts of cars and all sorts of budgets, right up from the uh, Lotus 26Rs and E-types at the top end of the scale, right the way down to the midgets and the minis at the bottom. So if I wanted to go racing, I don't have a huge budget, what's the minimum amount I'd have to spend? Right, well, one of our races, which is a 40-minute race, uh, would cost around about £275 up to about £300, depending on the circuit. And, of course, you can share that with another driver if you so wish, so half the cost with a friend. And so that literally gets me my 40-minute race? That gets you a 40-minute race. There's a small fee to join the club and to register the car, but other than that, that is what you pay, and that's it. Roughly what would I be spending to get one of those cars race-prepared and on the circuit? It's very difficult to say, depending on the, tra on the actual car that you start, base car, but you could probably get an, an E-Type. You'd probably have to spend something in a region about twenty to £25,000, uh, whereas you, to get something that would be able to race uh, in the lower cars, you could probably get something on the track for around about 4000 That is a, an approximation. And that would be one of the midgets, I take it? That would probably be a midget or, an, or a mini, something like that. You may even get it cheaper than that if you do all the work yourself. That's incredible. I mean, you would expect to spend tens of thousands on a race car. Well, some people do. There are a lot of people who do that, but we in the Classic Sports Car Club want to further the grassroots of motorsport and try and make it uh, open to as many people as possible. It's time now to catch up with Richard, who's over on the live rally stage. Keith, this is the first time you've uh, driven a rear-wheel drive car since you were 15, and it's got 400 horsepower. Uh, I know you're British rally champion, but what are your views before you go out? I think I wish I'd better get to know it the first. So there's a lot of horsepower going to the back wheels. Should be good fun, all right, but um, maybe once you get a feel for it, I wouldn't like to hit the throttle straight away because I'll probably end up going backwards down the road, but it should be good. Uh, I don't think you'll be going backwards. I notice you've got a passenger on. Does she know that you haven't driven a 400 horsepower rear wheel drive car yet, Keith? She does know because she's probably after hearing you say it. <laughs> we'll talk to you when we come back. Thank you, Keith. What did you think? Same as that, the sound is brilliant and it feels really good, really good fun, like just the instant power all the time. Um, it's something I could get used to, I think, having that much power. You know, you're obviously involved in modern rally, but what about all these old fantastic historics? Is that something you, you know, do you like the, the, the history of rally? Is it, is it something you've always followed? And, and again, I know you, you go into the future, but what about the historics in your view? Yeah, I suppose. One year that stands out is that Group B year. That was, I suppose, the year when rallying was at. Everyone knows, even if you didn't hear rallying, you know about Group B rallying. Um, I would have like mounted that I watched on YouTube. is ridiculous. Like It's just brilliant to watch the old stuff. Um, I suppose after that, I suppose I would have always been involved in rallying. I know a good bit about it because of my uncle being involved in it and stuff like that. So, yeah, I suppose I've always had an interest in the older stuff. 
Uh, well, I think, I think the other thing is the spectators like it now, obviously with the noise, because obviously the modern rally cars, uh, even faster than the old Group B cars, but they're not banned. But with this, all this fantastic old Group B stuff, is it just the noise or is it the look of the car or just the outrageous of what they look like? A bit of everything, I think, is just the power, uh, the, the way they look, everything about them, just the fact that they have no handling and about 600 brake horsepower is just... And these men sat in and drove them to stick there, for instance. Now, like it's just awesome. Just it's beyond belief some of what they were doing in them cars. Simon, there's quite a vast collection of cars on offer here. Yeah, there are. Um, we've got 60 odd cars covering all sort of tastes and pockets, uh, from the race cars and, and road cars. So something pretty much for everybody. And behind us here, the collection that we can see. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, the escorts we've got, the four escorts and the Porsche are all basically race cars and the escorts together we thought formed a nice sort of view so we put them together on display there from the Blomquist car that, at the top end which is more or less a new car built to do a particular thing to the, uh, the RS 1800 at the end here, the 70s car that's a very historic uh, and very correct rally car that raced in period. And what sort of prices are you thinking these may go for? The Longquist car at the top, we're thinking sort of somewhere around 50,000 and the, the RS 1800 somewhere around 100,000. I mean, it's sort of very difficult to be precise on these things because you're trying to guess what somebody is willing to pay for them and uh, sort of and they don't come to the market every day. So it's not as though you have something to, to judge it by. But that's what we think that roughly they will fetch. And for those people that don't have £50,000 to spend, is there anything here on offer that they can get their hands on? There's loads of stuff. I mean, besides the automobilia, there's a lovely little child's car up there that uh, you were admiring earlier on. Simon, as well as the saloon cars, there seems to be a couple of single-seaters out on offer as well. Yeah, we've got a lovely little Cooper in the, on offer, uh, which is a nice Mark 9 Cooper uh, that used to be owned by a chap called Mark Josen, who sadly died recently, uh, that was the archivist of the Midland Motor Club. And the yellow one's the nice little sort of clubman's car, going back to what I was saying before about you can go racing for relatively little money. Uh, the Tigers likely to fetch sort of somewhere around seven or eight thousand uh, pounds. Then we have a great range of motorcycles, including a collection of motorcycles from Valencia uh, that come to the sale. Some really interesting, beautifully restored motorcycles there. Some bicycles, which of course are going uh, very much in the ascendancy of value. Some Hetchins there that have come out of his ceased estate. We have with us uh, the original Stig, the real Stig, Stig Blomquist. Yeah, we've reunited with uh, a replica car, one of the ones you drove uh, in 1984. Um, I've got a list here of uh, the people you beat on that event. Can you, first of all, just recall that World Champ Rally Championship win for us? No, OK, it was a great uh, opportunity to win the championship. And OK, Audi was giving me a fantastic season with... Two different cars, first the A1, and then we did the end of the season with the Sport Quattro, so that was really good. Uh, and what's the car like to drive, you know, actually on the events? Um, what were you driving before that, before the, uh, the four-wheel drive came, cars came out? Oh, OK, and before I was driving Saab quite a bit, and then I did a little bit here in England with the Lotus Talbot, and then I went to Audi, and that was a fantastic feeling to get the four-wheel drive car. And is, was there just a huge difference in performance and uh, handling and grip? OK, the, the difference between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive is like day and night. You don't, it's difficult to explain. You have to try it. And OK, when you have done that, you, you don't want to have a two-wheel drive anymore. Well, we know you're a reasonably good driver, but did, did it come naturally just going straight to four-wheel drive? For me, it was quite easy because I had a lot of experience with a front-wheel drive car and that you have to drive the Audi similar to the front-wheel drive car, so that was easy for me. Uh, when you actually won the World Rally Championship in 1984, you actually beat eight other World Rally Championship winners and 17 other drivers who had actually won a World Rally Championship. Yeah, OK, that's the difference, but OK, hopefully it will be the same sometimes again when the young driver get the chance to get in proper cars because today it's too few who is in the championship uh, i believe you're going to be driving this car later on will that bring back some memories of course it will that's for sure Pretty awesome achievement for you, having now broken the record. 
Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm very pleased and proud to have been a part of this team. It really was a fantastic effort. Uh, and to come away with a world record for a steam car, 148 miles an hour, how, how lucky am I? Absolutely. I mean, incredibly lucky. And, and it's been quite a tough challenge for you, really, hasn't it? Yes, the, the, the technology to, to get this car to work really was um, a, a struggle for all of us out in America. We were experiencing temperatures of over 115 degrees nearly every day. We were working in a desert, but we had a heat wave at the same time. Um, and it really was a, a, a true grit determination that, that saw us through in the end. And in terms of the car, I mean, looking down at the car, it's, it's an awesome piece of kit. Tell us a bit about it. It is an awesome piece of kit. I mean, the car is 27 feet long, weighs 3.3 tons. Um, it has 140 litres of water on board that we heat by propane gas. Uh, it's heated by 12 boilers up to a temperatures of about 400 degrees centigrade. Uh, the steam then hits the Curtis wheel turbine at twice the speed of sound, um, which then spins the rear wheels. So, I mean, there's immense forces, immense heat in the car. Um, it really is a, it's a fabulous experience driving it. What brings you to being at a historic race car show? Um, well, we like to get the car in front of the public as much as possible. The car is called inspiration. And we want kids and, and young adults to come and see the car, see it, touch it, feel it, climb in and out of it. Um, and we want to inspire other, other children to go forward and, and try and, and beat records that we've set or, or other classes of records. Um, it's a fabulous machine. It's a fantastic draw. We've been so busy here and we just want people to see it. If watching the live action isn't quite enough for you, then down here with Westfield Cars, you can get a spin round in one of these classic cars. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> See you after the break.